The Saturn I was a rocket designed as the United States' first medium-lift launch vehicle for up to 20,000 pound, 9,100 kilograms, low Earth orbit payloads. The rocket's first stage was built as a cluster of propellant tanks engineered from older rocket tank designs, leading critics to jokingly refer to it as Cluster's Last Stand. Ten Saturn I rockets were flown before it was replaced by the heavy lift derivative Saturn IB, which used a larger, higher total impulse second stage and an improved guidance and control system. Existing U.S. launchers could place a maximum of about 3,900 pounds in orbit, but might be expanded to as much as 9,900 pounds with new high-energy upper stages. In any event, these upper stages would not be available until 1961 at the earliest, and would still not meet the DOD requirements for heavy loads. The design envisaged eight rocket tanks similar to the Redstone stage strapped around a central larger tank derived from a Jupiter rocket. Several variations were proposed, using a common clustered first stage, and upper stages based on either the Atlas or Titan IABMA favored the Titan as the Atlas production was extremely high priority and there was little or no excess capacity to spare. A Centaur would be used as a third stage, which was expected to be ready for operational use in 1963, right when the lower two stages would have completed their testing. The SLS used a set of common modular components with solid fuel boosters and hydrogen, oxygen upper stages to allow a wide variety of launch configurations and payload weights. In July 1959, a change request was received from ARPA to upgrade the upper stage to a much more powerful design using four new 20,000 lbf liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen-powered engines in a larger diameter 160-inch second stage, with an upgraded Centaur using two engines of the same design for the third stage. For reasons of economy we had recommended, and it had been approved, that in building the second stage, we would use the same diameter as the Titan first stage 120 inches. How the tanks are divided internally, or the structure reinforced inside, or the kind of structural detail that is used at the end in order to attach the structure to a big booster below, or to a different size stage above, have very little effect on tooling problems. Suddenly, out of the blue came a directive to suspend work on the second stage, and a request for a whole new series of cost and time estimates, including consideration of increasing the second stage diameter to 160 inches. Von Braun was skeptical of liquid hydrogen as an upper stage fuel, but the committee convinced him that it was the way to go on future upper stage development. The eight group were low-risk versions similar to the Saturn designs proposed prior to the meeting. The original design using Titan and Centaur upper stages became the A1, while another model replacing the Titan with a cluster of IRBMs became A2. The B1 design proposed a new second stage replacing the A-2's cluster with a new four-engine design using the H1 like the lower stage. Finally, there were three C-series models that replaced all of the upper stages with liquid hydrogen ones. The C1 used the existing SI clustered lower, adding the new SIV stage with four new 15,000 to 20,000 lbf engines, and keeping the two-engine Centaur on top, now to be known as the SV stage. The C2 model added a new S3 stage with two new 150,000 to 200,000 lbf engines, keeping the SIV and SV on top. Finally, the C-3 configuration added the S2 stage with four of these same engines, keeping only the S3 and SIV on top. Of these new stage designs, only the SIV would ever be delivered, and not in the form that was drawn up in the committee report. In order to meet development schedules a cluster of six Centaur engines were placed in the new 220-inch stage to produce the new SIV of roughly the same performance as the original four upgraded engines. The resulting stage, the SIVB, improved performance so much that the Saturn was able to launch the Apollo CSM, proving invaluable during the Apollo project. An important factor in this decision was that the Dodd preferred to have a launch vehicle that they were in complete control of instead of having to share the Saturn with NASA. Likewise, the development of the Titan III eliminated the need for the flexible, staging concepts of the Saturn, which was now only intended to be used for crewed launches in the Apollo program. Only the SV survived in its original form, while the SIV would appear in modified form and the Saturn V would feature an entirely different S2 stage. The Saturn I made its maiden flight on the 27th of October 1961 with a dummy upper stage and partially fueled first stage. Three more flights with dummy upper stages followed over the next 17 months, which were all completely or mostly successful. Two of them had the SIV filled with water and detonated at high altitude after stage separation to form an ice cloud that was then photographed. The SV third stage was developed as the Centaur rocket stage, it was flown inactively four times on the Saturn I with the tanks filled with water. 
the SV would become an upper stage for the Atlas Centaur and Titan III launch vehicles and their derivatives. The SI first stage was powered by 8H1 rocket engines burning RP-1 fuel with liquid oxygen as oxidizer. The SIV stage was powered by six LOX LH2-fueled RL-10 engines, mounted on gimbals. These first four vehicles followed ballistic, non-orbital trajectories, and the dummy upper stages did not separate from the single-powered stage. The Block 2 vehicles included two powered stages, and went into orbits. Beginning with SAW-5, the guidance instruments were carried on the instrument unit, just ahead of the SIV stage. The Saint-90 stabilized platform was the active IMU for SAW-5 in the first stage of SAW-6. The SV stage was intended to be powered by two RL-10A1 engines burning liquid hydrogen as fuel and liquid oxygen as oxidizer. The SV stage was flown four times on missions SAW-1 through SAW-4. All four of these missions had the SV's tanks filled with water to be used a ballast during launch. An early photo of the SAW-T stage appears above in the SI stage section of this article. Now on display in a vertical position with dummy upper stage in the rocket garden near MSFC headquarters, alongside several examples of heritage vehicles such as the V-2 rocket, Redstone, Jupiter C and Jupiter IRBM. See photo, SAW D5 Block 2 Dynamic Test Vehicle, consists of SID5 Booster Stage and SIVHD Hydrostatic, Dynamic Upper Stage, used in tests at MSFC Dynamic Stand in 1962.